Here is something to consider. If Donald Trump does indeed go to trial for trying to steal the 2020 election, special counsel Jack Smith will have stunning new testimony to use against him. According to ABC News, Dan Scavino, who served as Trump's deputy chief of staff for communications, told Smith's team that as the violence began to escalate on January 6th, Trump was just not interested in doing more to stop it. Former Trump aide Nick Luna also told federal investigators that when Trump was informed that then-Vice President Mike Pence had to be rushed to a secure location, Trump responded, so what? ABC News also reports that after unsuccessfully trying for up to 20 minutes to persuade Trump to release some sort of de-escalating statement that day, Scavino and other aides just left the president alone to watch the violence unfold on television. That is when, according to sources, Trump posted a message on his Twitter account saying that Mike Pence didn't have the courage to do what should have been done. Scavino, the only other person with access to Trump's Twitter account, told both Jack Smith and White House lawyers at the time, quote, I didn't do it, meaning one of the most incendiary, controversial messages of January 6th was all Donald Trump. Joining me now is Michael Schmidt, investigative reporter for The New York Times and author of Donald Trump vs. the United States, Inside the Struggle to Stop a President. Michael Schmidt, it is great to see you. I found this reporting stunning, not just because of what was reported, but the, the sources themselves. First, let's talk about um, Dan Scavino. This is a person that I think has been with Trump since he was a teenager. What do you make of the fact that he is talking and being apparently quite open with the special, a special counsel's team? So Scavino tried really hard not to talk. He wouldn't cooperate with the January 6th committee. He was held in contempt. The Justice Department declined to charge him in connection with that. When the special counsel came calling, he again tried to not answer their questions and was ultimately compelled by a judge to do so. So a bit under duress, he went before a grand jury and, you know, from Scavino's side, answered factual questions about what happened that day. If you're him, you're trying to strike this very odd balance between cooperating in a federal investigation where you can't lie and remaining as Donald Trump's, you know, tweeter, tweeter assistant. And apparently he's trying to do that. He is still in Trump's orbit at the same time that we're learning about this testimony, which uh, is is new and different. We know we've known the basics of the story of what happens on January 6th in the West Wing and Trump. But when you read it and you see in this story what happens sort of through Scavino's eyes and Scavino is the person who's trying to get Trump to to stop this violence. Scavino where Scavino is is being portrayed as as trying to to you know end it. Yeah. It's 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 pretty striking, even even on a story that we sort of already knew. Yeah, and very much not an enabler in the eyes of Scavino, but someone who's saying this is not good and not a good look for you, Mr. President. Um, so when ABC News approaches the Trump camp, a Trump spokesperson says in response to this reporting, Dan Scavino is one of President Trump's longest serving, most loyal aides. And his actual testimony shows just how strong President Trump is positioned in this case. OK, I'm very interested in this sort of tenor of this statement, because I wonder if you think the audience is people reading the ABC News article or Dan Scavino? Is this a kind of like, Dan, you would never betray me kind of statement? I mean, how, how do you understand I mean, as that? I've seen sort of different statements that have come out that Trump has put out since, since leaving office and still when he was in office. They really just sort of have nothing to do with the underlying issue. Like that quote doesn't really speak to anything in the story. If you read the story and you read what Dan Scavino said, regardless of what the law is and, and what the um, the evidence may be, it's just not a pretty portrait of yeah. what goes on. It's actually pretty ugly. And, you know, if you were in a juror and you heard this account from someone who is so close to Trump, who's not really adverse to Trump. So it, it's not like you're bringing in someone who Trump has broken with, like, let's say, Bill Barr or John Kelly. This is someone who's still in Trump's orbit, like, you know, as, as we see in that statement. So it would be interesting to me to see at a trial. Well, what would what would the jury see if Dan Scavino was the one who was saying, yes, Donald Trump wouldn't respond 
to stop this violence. And, and this account were to come out of his mouth. Now, do they call him at trial? Do you take someone who is such a Trump loyalist and put them yes! on the stand? <laughs> I mean, but, you? But, but you could also end up with Dan Scavino going on and on about, you know, what a witch hunt this is sure. or whatever. I mean, you're really rolling the dice in a way that you're not with a less contentious witness. It, look, Dan Scavino has been contentious here. He tried to get out of having to give this testimony. What? Michael Schmidt, why are we hearing about this? Like, why? What is? Who stands to gain from leaking this reporting about what Dan Scavino has said to special prosecutors? I, I always hate that question because okay. as a reporter, like, it's like the no notion that we're sitting around and like the phone rings and like here's the leak. I mean, the reason that stories like this come out is because. It's a very big story. A lot of reporters are talking to a lot of different people. We don't know everything that's going on. We don't have full access to everything that happens before the grand jury. And little by little, media institution by media institution, we learn different things and we put them out there and we get a bigger sense of this. This is a, an, an incredibly intriguing story. It would be the definitive story about any other presidency. Yeah. Because of the January 6th committee and the work that they did, it sort of is adding on to something that has already been created. Um, you know, at, at the same time, it takes all these different stories for us to get the portrait that we have today. You know, however many years we are into the Trump story, it's because of stories here, there and such. And reporters that are out there just trying as hard as they can to, to learn to whatever's tell, out to, there. To braid the strands yeah. together. Stun stunning to me that Dan Scavino and even Evan Corcoran, some aides who have, a lawyer, who have offered some of the most damning details about what Trump has been doing in these federal cases, remain in his orbit. Well, but the thing is, is that when we get to someone like Scavino, who was right around Trump and who's still a Trump loyalist, his account had basically lines up with what the January 6th committee said. Yes. The, well, there's apparently still more to come. Michael Schmidt. New York Times, my friend, thank you. Great to see you. Thanks for your time.